everyone, to another fantastic episode of Was That In Good Taste? I'm one of your hosts, and my name's going to be Chandler Phillips. And with me, as always, is... I'm your other host, James Beery. And the reason we got this, uh, this episode is so amazing is because it's all about firsts. And first things first, remember to like, comment, and subscribe so that you can hear about all the things that came before the first of, uh, episode. The precursor. Uh, the precursor. The, everything up until now has been prequel. Really, this is this is Th- it. This, this is, is main event. this is the first episode of firsts. Because if you <laughs> ain't first, you're, you're last. last. Yeah. Um. But yes, we do have a very fun, uh, exciting episode because we are going to be the first ones to comment first on this whiskey that we have here. I found out recently, James, as I was scouring the internet to find some sort of details on this whiskey that uh, is carried uh, actually at the whiskey shop in Greenpoint in Brooklyn. If anyone uh, wants to look upon or or try It's called The Whiskey Shop. It's called The Whiskey Shop uh, in Greenpoint, Williamsburg. It's it's over there, you know? Mm -hmm. It's it's on uh, on Berry Street. Um, anywho, I got this bottle from there, and I could find absolutely nothing about any review or anything. There was just like the the straight up bottle description, any any like wine searcher or like something like that. And it dawned on me, no one has commented on this. No one has reviewed it. We can be the first to lead public opinion on the Flatlander green corn and ahi amarillo pepper whiskey. I've never been first before. Never been first? I've never been first. Remember back in the day when like someone would post the YouTube video and there'd be just a line of comments that all said first, first, Rem- first? Because Re- Remember? Do you remember? Were you Remember? As in it doesn't happen today? Does it not? As in I literally watched somebody doing like a post talking about how they wanted to donate money to Palestine and there was a comment and it, go- it was, oh my God, finally, first. First. That's hilarious. It's when you truly have nothing to contribute or of substance to say, go to the comments. There's something really fun about that. It's something exhilarating about being first, right? You know, because nobody's done it before. So you get to feel like you're special. You kind of feel like like a trailblazer in a sense. You know, you get to be the first one. To mark this, to perceive, to show and designate that you are the first to have perceived it. And even if you're wrong, because you're first, who knows? Who knows? Everything after that, as long as you're the first, first, like everything after is just kind of subsequent, you know? So with that said, let's go ahead and uh, give it a taste. So this, what is it? This is a, like I said, it's a green corn uh, whiskey, which um, I believe it's called a Oaxaca corn. Um, but it comes to us from Matchbook Distilling, which is based in Greenport, New York, not Greenpoint. I had to read that sentence a couple few times over just to make sure I had that had that nailed in. Um, and Matchbook Distilling, as I was reading up on them, are pretty fucking cool. Because they're doing a whole lot of firsts, their whole shtick, and and this is this is pulled from their from their website, but uh, Matchpoint Distilling is an R and D facility uh, facility dedicated to bespoke production of spirits that champion agriculture, anthropology, tradition, mm. and science, and uh, and. F- elaborating on that a lot of their recipes and a lot of the stuff that they put out is single bottle events like they they were trying something they wanted to experiment and so they came up with something that was was good and and interesting enough to bottle and sell and so that's kind of how we ended up with uh with Flatlander and this the reason they call it Flatlander is because it's an homage to the uh American Southwest um and the the large prairie lands that that uh that come to evoke that imagery um but Matchbook 
They also do a couple of my other favorite whiskeys. Namely, they have the Meta Modernity um, Cherry Wood Rye. Mm-hmm. I didn't know that was them. That was oh. them. They also do a handful of vermouths, aperitivos. Um, they do a rum, a rum that is cold. No, it's a rum that is coffee bean fermented, um, which it goes through an additional fermentation with coffee beans uh, to impart a flavor. But it's a it's a clear rum. They're just they're doing some really cutting edge stuff and just kind of experimenting and seeing what works, what doesn't. And the really cool thing about their website, too, is they'll put exactly what's in their recipes. They'll tell you this is this one is. uh, Oh, does it say on here? Um, Oh, but it is Oaxacan green corn. I did get that right. And it is uh, distilled from 51% Oaxacan green corn. Um, and then the rest, I believe, is malted barley. Um, but they'll tell you exactly what goes into it, including the type of yeast that they hmm. use and the proportion of yeasts that are used. So it's like open sourced. It's very open sourced. Oh, because they don't really repeat them. They don't. So there's no real risk of them. You it's, know, what are you they're gonna not do? trying to do anything proprietary that they're like going to have as like a long lasting thing. They're all their whole shtick is if you ain't first, you're last. And we're going to be the first ones to try this. What's they, different about this one? So the big thing is it's made with a different kind of corn than most other whiskeys. It's Oaxacan green corn, which in in color is actually more like rainbow corn. Um, but it's. Uh, uh, a little bit finer kernels, mm-hmm. um, not as sweet as a lot of the sweet corns that we use. It's more kind of in line with like picture a lighter, airier, bloody butcher or the mm-hmm, what is it mm-hmm, mm-hmm. the the that that red corn. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember. Um, and then the casking that they do in it is something that's very interesting that we don't see a lot of. Uh, it. It's casked in a former Sotol cast. Oh. Now you're probably probably wondering. What's Sotol? Nothing. What's Sotol with you? Um, wait, there was a better joke. That, and Sotol is a uh, spirit that um, comes from the uh, northern Mexican and western West Texan um, area. It is the state spirit of Chihuahua. Or Chia, is it? Is it the? Is it set set the same? Don't as the dog? ask me. I don't know. Oh, um, hands yeah. off. The it's it's like a mezcal, except it's not made from agave. It's made from a desert spoon, which oh. similar to agave has like the pina, and it's just another kind of arid. Um, an arid region kind of cactus succulent type deal. Um, but it's a different plant. And so it has a completely different flavor. And I think if I remember one of the previous liquor shops that we worked at had, a had a one single single bottle of Sotol and they could not move it. And it was in like the 20% off basket for years. Wow. Wow. And it's just, no one, no one knew what it was about. What is kind of interesting is um, a lot of these kind of flavor profiles, and this might, I th- okay, I think I remember the Sotol, you know the one that's got like the the chicken on the label? Like it's got like a rooster, it's kind of a squat bottle, almost looks I like I think a I know what you're talking bottle. about, but I don't want to, but I think so, yeah, yeah. So that one, I believe has like chicken or chicken fat in the, in oh. its its fermentation like there's there's an element of poultry in it and in another version of flatlander also from matchbook distilling they throw a, a whole fucking goose in it like they let the goose loose they let the goose loose in the infusion and apparently it gives like just this really unique um fullness and like fat like a it kind of takes it almost into a gravy kind of deal. Ooh. And so yeah, Matchbook Distilling is doing a lot of really interesting stuff that um I think 
places that are so focused on proprietary stuff and like making a name for their brand might get caught up in try- trying to do like consistency. Matchbook Distilling is the complete other side of the spectrum of that. And so I guess without further ado, let's go ahead. Let's go ahead and try it. All right. Well, um, Ahi Amarillo corn whiskey with Ahi Amarillo peppers finished in Sultal cask. It's so interesting. Mm. I I saw it and I was just like, what is your story? What is your deal, dude? So I get, so first we're going to try it straight. Mm-hmm. And then we're going to try it their suggested way. Correct. And this is uh comes in at 40% ABV, uh retailed for about 63 bucks. Yeah, I thought it was I thought it was 58. That was with uh, Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. A little uh, that smooth, makes sense. Yeah, yeah. So talking. it's twenty percent off. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. Um, and so yeah, go ahead. Why don't you go ahead and taste it? Um, we did see that the recommended style, because again, uh, was uh, Matchbook is is really in depth on all of the spirits that they make. They recommended either try it, and I quote, over one big block of ice, or with a nice. Mexican cerveza, which is what we have here um, with some some Corona extra. And I got to agree with them. Mm. It seems like this is the kind of whiskey that you have on a hot day, on mm. a hot, arid day. I'm, I'm, I'm not exaggerating. It is humid in here. It is hot. After having this, I feel kind of equalized. I don't feel as hot as I was before. Mm-hmm. I, I'm not even trying to be funny, and maybe it's because just like with the cold, maybe my my blood vessels are constricted, and so I'm not really feeling or whatever. I know it's not making me cooler, but it is cooling you down. Yeah, and this doesn't have. It's interesting. So one, let's talk body, right? Like how it feels. Like is it heavy? Is it thick? Is it syrupy? Right. I think this has the body, the consistency again of like an Irish whiskey. Yeah, you run into that a lot. When it comes to like non bourbons, non scotches, you know, I think because when you start, you know, when when it's not aged a lot, or you start being really interesting with it, this is just the kind of body you get. And you if know. you're using used casks that yeah. aren't, um, they're not charred, or at least as far as we know, um, and they're not like sherry or anything like that, so it wouldn't impart the same like depth of coloration in it. It does kind of come off. Almost like it tastes like tequila. It it tastes like a whiskey that was raised by tequila. It's like weird. It's like there's almost an agave. It's almost like smoked. It's almost like smoke in there, but it's like it's like not. It's not smoky. I don't understand. It's it's like so one. All right. It's like it's, it's not too sweet. Um, it is. Mm, you know, maybe maybe four and a half out of 10 maybe 4.5 to 5 out of 10 in the acidity um the, it, you can tell it's corn but it doesn't ha- it doesn't have the same sweetness that no. i'm used to like it's not like a vanilla or like like a it's not a buttery kind of corn it was like spice it's a spice kind it's it's almost like if rye it's a corn in variation of or a rye variation of corn cuz it's got like it's tannic. It makes sense why they say they have this with a beer like this. I think because it it's like clear. It has a very crisp consistency. It's like it's on your palate. It's simple. It goes down. A little bit of flavor lingers because that's just the science of how it works. But mm-hmm. like most of it's gone, right? You know, anything that's left is a little bit bitter. It's a little bit, I, I don't know about you, but in my palate, I'm getting like on the side, it's like a little bit of bitterness that's like lingering. That would, I think, pair perfectly with a light, not complex, not particularly like wild beer. So it's like this is a little light and the complexity of this, but the simplicity of it would allow it to be like something, you know, you know what it's like? It's like cheap tequila, but better because it's not tequila. You ever get like a cheap tequila where it's like kind of watery and it kind of kicks you. Right. But it's like better than that because it's whiskey. I don't yeah. know. I it does it begs for a lime. Like I I want just like 
I don't even want to bite into a lime. I want to take a, a split lime mm. and just kind of rim the glass with it. So that way it would get like just a touch of kind of lime this, flavor. Some kind of citrus juice. Actually, I think I'd go grapefruit. Um, but I think I'd go ruby red. And I would make a sweetened grapefruit juice because I think that, like, I know a lot of people don't like it as bitter as I do. To make it sweeter, just I'm trying to get that citrus, that sweetness, the complexity. Like a, like a little whiskey Paloma? Yeah, just like a little, yeah. A Paloma? Yeah, but I don't, but I don't like, the, I don't like the, the cheap grapefruit juice. No. But other people don't like the 100% grapefruit juice. I feel like maybe a little bit of grapefruit juice with some simple syrup, maybe. Okay. I can see that. Or... Yeah. Ooh, you can make a uh, oleosaccharin with grapefruit peels. Oh, that would be interesting with this. Um, it it wasn't as spicy as I expected, and I looked up why. Because why is that? capsaicin has a higher um, boiling point or vaporization point than water, and so you know, aki amarillo. Peppers were going to be spicy? They were going to have some spice to no, I don't think those are spicy at all, aren't they? They're, they're not. They're not unspicy. No, I could have sworn those were not spicy. I could have sworn those were like lending towards sweet. Well, let me let me look it up. Again, our perceptions of spicy. That's true, but also I, I I don't, you know, maybe I got my peppers mixed up. Okay? But also they're calling it a pepper and not a chili, right? And it, peppers it is part of the chili pepper species. Mm -hmm. Popular pepper in Peru. Mm -hmm. People in Peru peruse peppers predominantly. Uh, poor, people in Peru. People. Por. Por. Por, <laughs> por, por yeah. favor. Por, Portugal. Pour some <laughs> sugar on me. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so, okay. It is. It is on the sweeter side. Yeah, I, I already know, only because... Oh, it's common name. Cayenne pepper. Yeah, I know this. Yeah, that's that's it's, it's just a... Yeah, but, that, but, but here's the thing. That's not even spicy. I know it's not yeah. even spicy, but it doesn't seem to have like any sort of capsaicin mm -hmm. in it. And it's because... But Amarillo, isn't, it, isn't that dried also? Yeah. And that's the thing because it's dried, also, and I think that like Chipotle still has spice. Chipotle's do not have spice. They have some. You're gonna tell. You're gonna. Look. No, no, no. If you say spice as if you were referring to a spiced food, then they are all spice. Look, but when you're talking about like heat, absolutely without exaggeration, I would give chip dry Chipotle's not. Not Chipotle. It's a jalapeno. It's a dried jalapeno. You're uh, meaning to tell me that a dried jalapeno has no spice? Jalapenos are actually, they have very high sugar content. They're very sweet, right? And that's why, that's why, just like with the Amarillo, I just I know my stuff. When you dry them, right, the, they actually, they become way less spicy. So if you ever get like the dried jalapenos, for example, the only part that's spicy is gonna be the seeds. Mm -hmm. The flesh part is never spicy, and I really doubt. You know what I mean? Unless they were going for spicy, they probably, they probably got rid of the seeds and just went with the flesh. This is what I would do, only because I think that it's, when it comes well, to according according to their oh, testimony on okay, their website. Okay, well, all right. That's, this is what they do. I don't know. They took whole ahi amarillo peppers. Okay. Chip chop chopped them up. Okay. Uh -huh macerated them, threw them into the hopper when they did their infusion. How many of them? So many. Just so many. I wish it wasn't that spicy. It's probably not that spicy, but also capsaicin doesn't doesn't evaporate at the same temperature. And so That's you, true, yeah. It's not gonna you get in. you get the different flavonoids. You get the different esters. Sounds, sounds familiar to me. Exactly. It's and so you it tastes almost more like paprika. I, I was gonna say, like a dried bell pepper than it is an amarillo pepper. That's what I'd say. Now let's try this the oh, way please, they God. they best I feel like having it. not drank it in a minute, the heat's starting to creep up on me again. That's why we got all three of these here. Um, Let me know what y'all think about. Talking about first, 
another setup. This is like the third season. But guess what? We're going to keep changing it so that you keep being entertained. So please let us know what you think in the comments section below. Watch this. Like the video. Like the video. If you're watching and you're on YouTube, like the video. When I say like, look at the thumbs up button. It does a thing now. It does like a little animation. When the person in the video says the like. That That's pretty cool. Yeah, That way when I say wow. like, you go, oh. AI really is making everything so much better for us. <laughs> Who needs jobs? I can't, I can't see one downside to this. In fact, I'd be the first person to tell you that AI, cool beans with me. This is this is a fun this is a fun uh, whiskey. I do think it would be tough to market and sell. However, it's just so interesting. That's a game. How? That's a game. How would you market and sell this? Flatlander Ahi Amarillo, corned whiskey with Ahi Amarillo peppers, finished in Sotol cask. I'll be charitable and say if you want, you can change the bottle. I like the bottle. I would do okay. I like the height of it. I would do something to make it a little bit more reminiscent of a tequila. Um, but I think the the labeling on it really conveys like this um uh like Austin, Texas kind of like it it feels like it's like hey, this is a rancher's kind of whiskey. Whereas usually a rancher's kind of whiskey like Bourbon, bourbon is like someone who owns horses. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Rye whiskey is like someone who works for somebody yeah, who owns horses. Who works for someone who owns horses or who works in the factory. Oh. Or, scotch is for someone who works in the mines. And this is for someone who works on the ranch. I, I could see that. It's it's very palatable. It's so smooth. It, I feel bad, like even trying to think about what I would mix it with. But I think just like a, like you said, a simple maybe an elevated Paloma. Or... Here's the thing though: it's like so pale. It doesn't have an age statement. Obviously, I think that people because it's like an effectively a wine bottle with like a cork dipped in wax. I don't really know what's happening with it but i don't know it doesn't look expensive it doesn't but i, I would think that's... I, I would eliminate some of the liquid and put it in one of, like a bottle not like baby jane but similar to that where it where it has like a slightly different bottle shape with also a non standard amount you know why right why is that because this is fancy because this is first First right. of its kind. I think that, you know, part of when it comes to branding things like this, when you put it in a bottle like this, this gets really quickly compared to things that aren't as good as it or as interesting. Ooh, that that's are, true. That are at the same price with a label like this, which is why a good way to differentiate your brand from another is to actually raise the price on your product, right? Because if you have truly a premium product, right? You know the sweet spot's around forty dollars, but you see that the bottle that you have, maybe it's too late. You can't change it, and it just doesn't look like it's hopping off the shelf or it's gonna. You can literally just raise the price five bucks, right? The perceived value, if you have a good product, right? If you have a good product, which is why I think this is good. This is interesting. Take away twenty percent of it, put it in like a, a weird shaped bottle. I do kind of like how it's. It feels reminiscent of Tequila Ocho. Mm -hmm, yeah, and I yeah. feel like I love Tequila Ocho. I love what they're all about with their whole single estate, and I, I that's where I feel like the kinship with this bottle, where there is kind of an elegance in its simplicity. Um, for the record, hit me up. Let me know. Fifteen months in Sotol casks. Um, is is the age. And you know when I said earlier when I was like, oh, it's like this random number of corn and then the rest is, I don't know, like malted barley? I was fucking right. 
Like okay, I was okay, right. Okay. I was right on the money. You want to you want to read the website to the to the people? Yeah, I'll read it right off of this. It's Oaxacan Green Corn Bourbon. Into the mic, maybe? No, I refuse. <laughs> it's eighty three percent corn. They even put the pounded. They put okay. It's nine hundred and twenty pounds of corn. It's two hundred pounds of malt for a uh, malted barley. It's a thousand grams of GR two yeast. It's five hundred grams of wb dash 06 yeast um distilled with amarillo peppers i want to do this This we could totally do this if we are distilling at scale i would love to be able to offer that to just be like hey here's an experiment here's something (laughs) rant random because here's the thing i think that i think there's Unfortunately, we live in a capitalist society, whatever. You you don't want your brand to get stolen or whatever. But I think that there's precedent for allowing people... Precedent? To, you to, mean a first? I know, right? Sorry. Uh, it's true. I, I wonder if there's like some sort of rule or law that would allow you to allow people to use your recipes. But uh, not yet, but not just not commercially. Because I would love for somebody... Who wants to make some? If somebody wants to get, if somebody wants to sit down, do the math, and right try for twelve make. gallons and make it for their family for a barbecue, why not? Why not? Because they're gonna say they well, also because distilling your own spirits in the U.S. is illegal. You, oh, I, I mean, I forget. because yeah, it is. That's that's why not. You can't do it. Is because moonshining and making <laughs> illicit spirits is against but wait it's really easy though it's so easy well, i mean if you were to do it if you were to do it uh, okay. i don't know it's pretty it's a pretty easy workaround but there's a reason why you can't just say like hey if you want to make this at home here's a recipe instead you have to be like this is the recipe that we tried Wink, 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 wink. <laughs> and maybe if you scale it down, wink, 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 it would fit into a five gallon. Uh, oh, that's pretty funny. Distill, yeah, that's pretty good. Hot still. Um, so first, do you remember the first, uh, like the first time we took an adventure into fermentation and making our own? Oh, I, of course I do. Um, whiskeys and beers and stuff. Of course. What was yours? Mm. IPA, 5.9%. I actually still have the post-it note from the date. I, I still have it. I kept all my notes. Yeah, I keep, I keep them all. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, keep, I have a singular drawer that they're all scattered about in, like a rat's nest, and not in any particular order. But I do have all the notes. Yeah, I was going to post. I mean, I'm not going to do that. Anyway. Um, it was the IPA. I think I did... You did a saison, right? No, the first one. No, you did a Belgian. You did a Belgian. Yeah, it was. Oh wait, you're. Are you thinking? Because I did a. It was a Marzen. Oh, it was a Marzen Lager. That was like three years ago, maybe. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, and that came out. I think I might still have like one bottle. I don't. I don't. I don't. I would not drink. I know it's more of like. Oh, isn't the color of it so pretty and remember we, where it all began are we shooting it is that, is that how this works yeah this definitely feels like a shot and a beer kind of with if it wasn't like 60 bucks and if this were like a regular thing where people are just like we made a corn whiskey that tastes like tequila fancy bar frosty glass person brings it to you it would be cracks a, it for you be a premium shot and a beer combo yeah, 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 yeah. you know yeah chilled ice cold you know what would be kind of sick is if you had like those ice cube molds that are um, shot glasses, and so that's that so would... tacky. But then you could drink it and throw it on the ground. That's so tacky. Yeah. Opa, opa. You do it. Oh, you could do like a, a hollowed out pepper, and then you could eat it afterwards. Like. <sighs> That, way. that is the, literally the kind of thing that I feel like if I walked into a bar and I saw it was like, oh, uh, Amarillo shot with uh, beer. And 
they brought me the beer and it was nice and frosty and they're like, oh, give me one second for the shot. And I see them like go into a fridge and grab a pre-prepared because, you know, like they're trying to, you know, and they just hand me a fucking dried chili that's been partially rehydrated and filled with, uh, with, with, with liquor. And also, there's also, probably like a little hole in it. So it's like, <laughs> it's probably beautiful also because they probably also have like a, like a, a piece of parchment paper that's the shape of the pepper, so you don't have to, you know, touch yeah. it with your hands. Mm-hmm. And so just hand me a fucking pepper. I saw a TikTok of this woman who went to like a fancy Michelin star restaurant and everything was like little tiny bites and stuff. And she was like, it seems like a joke. One of the customers was screaming and stuff. They were screaming and didn't want to pay because it was so terrible. And that's how I feel. If I show up to a fucking restaurant and they and, and they I, do some <laughs> novelty bullshit like that. Hand me a, a cocktail inside of a pepper i think i'll lose my mind then how would you present a cocktail for or not a cocktail how would you present a shot from a 60 dollar bottle i would put a white guy inside of a stereotypically mexican hat and i would play like a fucking song and then like you know are you meaning to like you do you you'd make it feel like a <laughs> What's the Jimmy Buffett's a Margaritaville? Yeah, like a Margaritaville, you know, for these Capianos. <laughs> <laughs> like, look, Cucaracha yeah, plays yeah. in the background. Because I really like, feel like if you order that shit, some kid from <laughs> NYU is dancing around a sombrero. <laughs> it's like, it's like, I hope you have, I hope you have, Felice, Copley, Copley, Copianos. They're like, why can't you say happy birthday? Yeah, well, corporate said we're not allowed to. Sorry. <laughs> you know how the guys upstairs are. Anyway, let's have a drink. And then after, we'll hit that dusty trail. Talk about first. First. I finished it first. I did it. I did it first. So I'm going to tell them about some of my favorite firsts. Um, my favorite first is the fact that I'm a firstborn of of my family. Like, I'm a first sibling, eldest sibling. Uh, also, the first of the generation. Like, of, of the all Gen Xers before me. Mm-hmm. Oh. Like, ev- everyone else was... Got your, then a millennial popped out. And Drinking then, Starbucks. Exactly. Avocado toast. Avocado toast. <laughs> Uh, just like wasting water, moving to New York. Uh huh. Um, and also raised by two first siblings. Like both my parents were firsts. I feel like they said first siblings. And oh, <laughs> you thought you thought they were siblings? No, you can't both be first. Because if you ain't first, you're last. Okay, which. Again, being being the sibling in just a two a two child household, great joke, great joke, always kills. What's it like being the first sibling? It's I think it's a trip, honestly, because I was talking about this with with my partner who is also a first sibling, and there is really a psychology I think to uh to sibling order. You wouldn't know about that being. Being an only child, an only child, which has its own, its own. So you are both first and last. Single child and no, I was first only. Single mother, single child, like only child. That's true. I get all the attention, all of it. (laughs) Why do you laugh like your father? (laughs) (laughs) I started with all the attention. And then had to gradually relinquish it as more of these fuckers popped up. Was that traumatizing? Not traumatizing. Character building, I'd like to say. You know? Because you get you get to a point where you're like, ah, these kids. I'm only four years older than them, but they don't know what life used to be like. <laughs> like, you get really jaded really quick because you're also bestowed with authority for some reason. And there's this... There is this weird authority that comes from doing the thing first. Yeah, 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 of course. Like, you think about, like, people to set records and stuff in history as the firsts. 
right? And like in certain contexts, it's like Barry Bonds set the first or what not the first home run, but he was like the most memorable to really set the bar. But Jordy Robinson, fifteen penises, one night. I'm in one night at once. Oh my god! I'm saying firsts. It, that's a first. And I think I'm not even joking. That's there's number th- one. There's a reality that you'll notice in the modern age where, and kids are a perfect example of this because somebody's already done it. It shows people it can be done, right? Exactly. And there's nothing magical about being first. Somebody was going to be a first. If Someone's it's you, gonna get there first. You know, it's not really special to be first, but there is definitely something affirming about seeing that somebody has already done it. What do you think is the most important first in history? In history? Well, well okay, not the most important. Okay, let me rephrase that because that's <laughs> way too open ended. <laughs> what first in history? Do you think had to, because as you just said, as you just said, there was, it's not about like when someone's going to do it. It's about who does it first. Yeah. And I think what, what got me thinking was like the, the space race where it's like, you can kind of push the envelope of like being first to the orbit, being first to space, being first to circle the moon but it was really it ended with first to step foot on the moon first to set people there well, you don't know it until it happens and that's another thing about if being... it happens <laughs> it, uh, yeah. when it comes to like being first right you think about it and you go oh <clears throat> there's a person to do the first to this but like being first to the moon wouldn't have mattered if they both landed at the same time and engaged in a firefight because then it'd be the first lunar crew to establish dominance on the moon, right? Yeah. You know, it's all about it, it, after it's already happened. And <laughs> it I sounds think, like what you're saying is, yeah, it'd be more important if it was an actual race and not a fucking blowout. <laughs> it's like what they were what? literally months ahead of us. <laughs> there was literally like no, you if you have an actual, <laughs> if you have like an actual plan. <laughs> If you have an actual plan, right, I think that being first is way more significant, right? Mm -hmm. You know, and, but like, it's like, you know, you would say being first to the moon is significant, but it wouldn't be significant as after, after going to the moon, if the Russians, if we stopped really going to the moon, if the Russians were like, fuck it, we're going to keep going. I love that conspiracy theory where you're like, wait, if we ever stopped going to the moon, because we're still there. And no, actually, it's because we never we left said things. We just don't go because it's not worth it. I love just the antithesis <laughs> of like we faked the moon landing to we're faking all of the other shit we got going <laughs> it's on. Like the we moon. went there once and then <laughs> rovers. <laughs> you believe in rovers? We put man on the moon once. And it's like there's a dark side of the moon. <laughs> you know, there's there's something going on below this. There's an iceberg to the moon. First man on the moon. Right? Important phrase, right? That yeah. phrase is important. But guess what? If he had said a different phrase, that was fine, but just not as catchy, not as that didn't resonate as much. Like literally the moment was important, but he could have said something completely different that was like fine, but didn't resonate. And then suddenly somebody being first in the mood doesn't matter. What if he just <laughs> what if he just fucking fumbled it all together? It was like first first step for mankind. Biggest step for all, for man all people, can. including bad people. Oops! Ah, ah I, oh. I boofed it. Oh god! Uh. Uh. <laughs> oh, sorry guys, I really fumbled the bag on that one. Uh, let me. Can we retake? Can we? Can we reshoot? It's so funny because I think that firsts can, like you know, you talk about first. We always talk about like the really good firsts, and all the stories are good. It's like, oh yeah, a person discovered this, right? But, like, you never expect a first to, like, really just come out of nowhere in, like, a really abstract way. Like, for example, the first time I went to a concert, mm-hmm. um, I was, like, hanging out at the library. And some somebody I, like, barely knew was like, hey, we're going to a concert. And they kept inviting me. And then one day I decided to go. So I get in the bus. I take the bus. And I get off. And I'm standing in front of a church. And I remember when I got sent the address, 
and I put it in. Instead of church, I was like, it's not church. you know, maybe it's an old building, you know. Google Maps in 2007, it, it literally like 2006, is not updated yet, right? You no, know, may, maybe it's not working on my Google, uh, Google G1 phone, the first Android phone. Maybe it's not working correctly. <sighs> well, I mean, it was an Android, so it was probably working pretty well. I go into the basement. Probably working better than. Yeah, what? better than nothing. <laughs> I go into the basement. I never forget this. This is how assertive it was. I go into the basement, and there's lots of people, the alternative people, piercings, people talking, people drinking Monster. I'm like, okay. But I see on the wall two statues of Jesus. Hmm. And I remember being like, okay, is this like an abandoned church or something? And I hear people setting up stuff. It's like a guitar, you know. Guy gets on stage. He goes, hey, what's going on? We're blah, blah, blah. And I was like, Hey, he we're goes, taking back Sunday. Who here believes in Jesus? Boom. <laughs> there was a smattering of applause. And huh. I was like, what? I mean, I'm not I'm not against it, but I just, what's happening here? And he goes, huh. Fuck Jesus! <laughs> and, and then a mosh, pit op- a mosh pit opened up, and I remember being in a basement of a church, fists flying, Whoa. you know? And I remember just being so shocked. You know, I had never been to a concert before. In front of me, that little stage, which is like probably waist height, it seemed like a mountain. You know, the band seemed so big, and I was like, they were untouchable. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, God. Firsts are so strange because they have so many different weird ways that they can just happen to you. That's that's right. the truth. The some of the biggest firsts are the ones you don't see coming, like the first brick that was thrown during the Stonewall Rebellion. Well, you know what they say: those who live in glass houses shouldn't throw stones. <laughs> are you are you are you meaning to say that like Marsha P. Johnson shouldn't have thrown <laughs> the first brick? No, can you imagine if I was like, well, actually, I heard Marsha P. Johnson was mean to a cashier once, so actually, not that important. Like, we're talking about, like, <laughs> civil rights, and you're like, well, Jesus said, <laughs> let those without sin cast the first stone. Which, uh, I mean, I feel like he's the first, maybe not the first, but, like, the first... Nepo baby to really use it to his advantage. No, you know why? Why? Because it's like it's like different, right? Because there's like a Nepo baby where it's like, let's say, no Jesus, Jesus is the no, first. No, nepo. We, okay, no, yeah, yeah. imagine right that you're a Nepo baby and like your your parents an actor, right? Your parents an actor, but they never make it, right? But just because they've been involved in film, and you've seen them. You have skill and ability. Jesus turned water into wine. Yeah. Loaves and fish abound. Right? But nobody knew that he was the son of God. Everyone knew. No, no, no. He said. People were like, son of God. People were like, hey, are you the son of God? And he's like, I am who no, you say no, I no, am. No, no, first of because all. Because if I wasn't, then why would I <laughs> say I am? And then every day in the streets, every day I am. What do you think? How do you think Jesus? Pharisees won't even play my jam. How would you think? How do you think Jesus would feel right now if he listened to Eminem's new album? Uh, how do you think Jesus would be sitting there? You think Jesus would be like, <laughs> he's like, fuck blind people, fuck little people, fuck people born with congenital heart disease. You think Jesus would be like? I honestly, I think, I think Jesus nowadays would be so punk that he would be like. Not fuck those people, but because of those people, fuck my dad. I'm not lying. If you literally look out and there's a punk band somewhere or a punk artist, and it's like really some musicians and like one really charismatic guy. That's right? a cult. You know? <laughs> That's a cult. It's Jesus. I promise you. <laughs> follow that guy. Follow that guy to the end of the world. And when if he starts giving you like weird messages or DMs, it's just because he's talking to you specifically and you're just really special to him. If you something's know? last, follow him. <laughs> Listen to everything he says because it's probably how you should live your life. Because they see you on a level 
that you don't see yourself. Like, could you imagine? Yo, imagine how special it would be to be on a mountain and just be like, Abraham. <laughs> hey, <laughs> watch it, watch it, watch it. <laughs> Kill your kid. <laughs> Fucking right. Hey, hey. If you if you're if you're really down, if you're really with it. Fucking kill your kid. He's not going to do it, right? He's, he's not going to do it. He's not going to do it. He's not going to do it. No. Oh, shit. He's doing it. <laughs> Is he... Whoa, 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 whoa. Whoa. Wait, wait, wait. And, and they, brought, they brought the goat, too. They brought the goat up the mountain, too. That's fucking dark, dude. <laughs> oh, my God. Wait. I want to see how this plays out. Hold on. Whoa. Whoa. Oh, he's got him on the slab. He's like, hey, hold the goat here. And he's like, they can... okay, all right. Oh, I Should we st- let him do it? I, I got to stop this. All right. Okay. I got to. Hey, hey, Abraham. <laughs> hey, uh, psych. Um, <laughs> JK. <laughs> oh, you, see, you, you don't know about this yet because I'm God. But uh, this is the first joke. <laughs> This is the first episode of Impractical Jokers. You think before, you think before you, think, you think Abraham was like Impractical Jokers? What do you mean, Lord? It's been on. It's been on for two thousand years. Of course, the oh my first God. episode of Impractical Jokers was God just buzzing Abraham. And he's Can like, you imagine going into he's the gotta Bible? He's got to do it. He's got to do it. He's like, Pauly, you know, Pauly, chapter six. You know, first four, like, like, fuck, man. And then, and then God dared us all to just cut the tips of our dicks off. And we were like, I guess it's part of the joke. We got to do it. Otherwise, no, that, that would be the punishment joke where it'd be like, God's egging you on. And then it's like, okay, if you don't do the impractical joke, you have to, you have to do the punishment. So that's where circumcision comes from. Is like, oh, you didn't do the thing. You didn't yeah. colonize the Holy Land. <laughs> yeah, they're working on it. They're, they're, <laughs> it's because we're tired of cutting off dicks. And sorry, dick tips. Dick, dick t- just the dick tip, t- just the. Don't know. go too far. <laughs> <laughs> whoa, whoa! I think it's really apropos. If you want to talk about first, you gotta listen, real or not. You gotta talk about God because I feel like every culture, right? Oh God, I, listen. I'm not here. I'm not here to bully anybody about their belief system. I will. But just because it's first just makes it funny. Because that just <laughs> means that that just means that like, you know, the Christian God is up there and he's literally just or she, they, them, it, it's up in the sky. And it's just like, yo, I'm gonna make Netflix. <laughs> I'm gonna make Netflix. I'm gonna make Netflix. <laughs> Check check this out, Gabriel. Gabriel, check this out. It's called a tardigrade. It's like no one can see them. They're so <laughs> cute, and you cannot destroy them. It's fucking hilarious. I just dude. created something called quantum physics, dude. This is so, yo, so they look at it, it's there. But when they don't, it's not there. It's not there. It's not there. But guess what? They won't know that it's not there. But they will. They, they're gonna figure it out. But they're not gonna be they're able. Never gonna to observe it. it. Hilarious. Oh, God. Oh, man. Um, you got some more for you got some more first. I want to I want to tell you the story of. Well, OK, I'll tell you the story of uh, when I first started smoking, because I think it's pretty funny and I'm. Listen, I may have said this on the pod before. If I have, let me know. Drop a line in the comments, just and and I'll I'll cut it off right now, and you can like skip ahead. <laughs> but the reason I started smoking was because, um, well, one, I stopped being a an athlete. I stopped. Uh, something that I was all. <laughs> I'm sorry. I, pl- he was an athlete. I played I played baseball and I wa- I yeah, wasn't Pee-wee? No, into high school. Like a good amount into high school. Into into freshman year doesn't count. No, I Okay, here's the thing. <laughs> I played first base, arguably the best base, and for for like 12 years and then once it came time to like go from 
know, freshman to JV, and then you grow into varsity. And I just was like, you know what? Why am I? And that was actually the first time I realized that I didn't have to do things I didn't want to do. It was like one of those like first like waking up epiphanies where like we were running laps around the around the baseball field. And I was I was dragging ass because I don't know. I was fucking I hadn't hit my second puberty yet. First puberty, that one wasn't good enough. That's one of the first that we'll just we'll we'll bypass. First puberty, worst per worst puberty. Um I had easy puberty. I don't know. Second puberty was good. You didn't kind of have it like breaking nope, broken up. I had that? easy. You just had it all at one? No, I had it slow with a transit. Oh, oh, when I was twelve, I was chubby. Oh, uh, that was so hard. Um, <laughs> we were running laps around the field, and I had this first realization where I'm like, I don't want to do this. Like, I'm doing this so that I can play a game that I like to have fun playing, but I haven't had fun playing this game or doing this thing or doing the practices. I don't. I don't want to be here. And so inevitably I got cut from the, from the varsity team. Um, I would have cut you. I, I would have cut me too. And so a few months later I was, I, that was like the, really the main thing that was keeping me from like exploring recreational um, cannabis use. And I was hanging out with some friends and they were rolling a joint. And I tell you, this was the lumpiest, most like, unorthodox looking joy. I watched Cheech and Chong movies. I watched How High. I watched uh what's another one? What's the one with Dave Chappelle and like uh, Half Baked? I know what a joint's supposed to look like. And so I was like, "Well, fine. Okay. Let me let me try my hand at this." And so they hand me the papers, they hand me the weed and I break it up by hand, get it all nice and fine. So wrapped it up, did the little twist at the end, and it was a great looking joint. And so I pass it to my friend and he lights it up and he goes, this is probably the best joint I've ever smoked in my young uh, stoning career. Because again, there weren't dispensaries or anything yet. People weren't like selling pre-rolls. People didn't really have grinders. Yeah, this is back it. when you learned how to do it by watching movies. Mm-hmm. <laughs> You watch Red Man and Method Man and a boat singing and Mom Stan's Du Hast, and you're just like, oh, I see what they're doing. I get it. I'm going to do that. Exactly. And I guess I picked it up on account of really good burrito rolling skills. Or the, the, trick, the trick that carried over <clears throat> was the fact that you have to actually tuck the paper down into itself. Hardest part. Hardest part. And so the first time I ended up smoking was because I had just rolled a joint for my friends to just throw, to just give them, to show that, like, here's a thing that you guys like. I'm better at it than you are. And, <laughs> and as they're passing it around, they just kept complimenting my handiwork. And I was like, well, I guess. I guess I have to smoke. I got to try it. And next thing you know... I've just thrown my whole life down the drain because that's what smoking cannabis does to you. Okay, kids, don't do it. You'll throw your life away. You know, that's the first step down a slippery slope. And for everyone else, it was fucking sick. You know, <laughs> that's the first step down a slippery dope. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> what was your first time getting high like? Man, it's so funny because uh, my... Well, my good friend who's not here anymore, Feb, February Adams, they used to live with me here. And <laughs> they had gotten some, it was like a sheet of Fruity Pebbles Rice Krispies. Ooh. And I looked at it and I was like, this Fruity Pebbles, and they, were, they told me, you can get whatever you want, take it, if it's my food or whatever. I, mo I bought all the food, but like if there was something there, they were like, oh. And I never did, but like one time I saw it and I was like, oh. So I ate it. Then we go to the kitchen. I make spaghetti. I make the spaghetti. We're laughing. I'm joking. And I'm like, huh, we're having a really good time. Feb was like, you gave me the small spoon. 
you don't love me. You, I'm like, we're laughing, we're giggling. Then you're like, oh, uh oh, spaghetti-o. <laughs> after, I'm like, huh, I feel dizzy. And I was like, is the gas on the stove on? So we're talking, and I'm laughing, and I go, <laughs> and I laugh, and I walk into the kitchen. And you know where the kitchen is. I walk into the kitchen, and as I walk into the kitchen, I slyly touch the dobs to make sure that they're turned off. And I was like, oh, this is so funny. <laughs> kind of graze over them, like, yeah, you're good. You're good. Then, then I'm laughing, you. and then they crack another joke, and then they crack a joke, and this is so embarrassing. They crack a joke, and I literally get up, and I go, <laughs> and I run. <laughs> out there, I go, I laugh, and I like, I literally laugh. I I laugh. <laughs> I go, that's so funny. I like overreact. And by the way, I don't think it's that funny. I'm just acting because what I want to do is I laugh, and I'm trying to act like I'm having a silly time, and I like laugh. And I'm like <clears throat> rolling on the floor, and I get up, and I pretend that I you ruffled. Yeah, I'm pretending like I'm overreacting. I'm pre- I'm laughing. Oh, okay, your bit. Yeah, is. I'm like. <laughs> So I'm like rolling and then I'm like, I like run out of the apartment. I was opening the door to let any gas out just in case that, <laughs> just in case the stove was on. Wait, so you're like, oh, if the stove's on, it's laughing no, but I, gas. No, but I checked it. No, because of the gas, you know. Who put and, nitrous in my <laughs> oven? And then, and then finally I told the, I told the fellow, I was like, oh, I was like, I, I don't know. I feel weird. And Tommy was like, "Oh, did you eat the rice, uh, the fruity pebbles, rice cracker treats?" And I was like, "Oh, wow, it was fine." Then we spent twenty minutes sitting there watching five minute crafts. <laughs> Feb puts on Smashing Pumpkins, which, even though uh, a book for Butterfly Wings was like kind of a strangely important song to me, just because it's like the first rock song I'd seeked, I'd sought out. Mm-hmm. Like I'd heard what my mother loved the Doors and stuff like that, but like my first time seeking out a song. Wasn't that song, but that's the first song I heard. So it's uh, at, at first, it's important to me, yeah. right? But like, I'm not, a, I wasn't a big fan. And Feb used to love melancholy and infinite sadness, especially track 12. But I'm sitting there and oh, Feb puts it on and it gets to zero. And Feb goes to the bathroom and I lay back and it's like emptiness is loneliness and loneliness is cleanliness and cleanliness is godliness and God is empty just, just like me. And I literally, yeah, I'm like, and then I sit up and I was sober. And I literally and was, then just, I was sober and I was like, what the, I was like, you was, got hypnotized. I was like, was that yesterday? But because when it was happening, when it was happening, cause I'd never been high before when it was happening, I was like, this feels weird. I should take pictures. So I ha- I might put it at the end of the pod. I have pictures and video. That's sweet. Of Because I was like, I'm, I'm worried. I'm like, what is happening here? You know what I mean? I'm like. <laughs> and you didn't you know. know that you had accidentally gotten stoned? Well. Or did you like not know, but no. <sighs> here we go. I didn't really know, but I kind of did. And I kind of wanted to just, like, participate in Feb's, like, you know. But what happened was, is that, like, I was like, okay, this is either real. This is either just, like, a Rice Krispie Treats thing or Fruity Pebbles Rice Krispie Treats or it has some cannabis in it, whatever. I've never done it before. But then I was sober for hours. So I forgot because, like, today I took some in the morning. And then, like, two and a half hours later, I'm like, woo! <laughs> wow. But then it really gets me, like, four hours after. Uh, yeah. So that's what happened. I was, like, having a good time. But, but, but when I was in the middle of it, it had been, like, four hours. So I really had begun to think that I was just, like, a snack. Mm, and so you just kind of went back and yeah. noshed a little yeah. bit more? No, no, I didn't. But Feb oh. didn't go come home because they had actually gone out and been like, oh, you, did you eat some? This is, you know, what this they, they didn't, they saw it and they didn't say nothing. And they knew I didn't smoke. So they probably, actually, in hindsight, Feb probably didn't realize. You <laughs> that, know what I mean? That you had snacked on, on but, their But like, I just ate a, I ate a whole cube. I ate a whole thing. God I like, damn, I that'll, it. and I just, I was. That'll put you out. And I remember ever since then, that album, that song, so good. <laughs> so good. Wow. The first, okay, I'm going to, 
I'm going to escalate a little bit. The first time I feel like I had a psychedelic experience um, is a really trashy one. Uh, cause it wasn't like with mushrooms or acid or any of the cool ways to have like a fun psychedelics ex- experience. It was with salvia. <laughs> and that's like the, it, okay. It wasn't, it wasn't like me doing inhalants or something. Cause I feel like that's the next level of psychedelic experience. Um, I mean, we've all done whippets once or twice. Accidentally, Never. Right. What? I knew better. Um, well, your cortex is formed now. Like you should, you should try. I'm that. good. I'm good. Just try oh yeah, that. yeah, 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 yeah. The, the depriving myself of oxygen, aka when I do it in P O N G, that's the same thing. I'm not breathing. You play pong. Anyway, it's no okay. Here's the difference. No, I don't want a headache. Have you ever been choked and came at the same time? No, I do the choking. Okay, so this is what I'm saying. <laughs> Maybe you need to have this first experience. I just think you're a bottom anyway. It's I I draw a lot of power from the bottom. Okay? It's It's like it's you know how like <laughs> like when you see jockeys on a racehorse they're they're hitting the horse but really it's the horse who's in control you know you get you get what i'm saying like the jockey doesn't win it's the horse who wins Woo. but the jockey is just the one like they're motivating them the whole time <laughs> and like just tugging on those reins your second like, your first psychedelic experience my first psychedelic experience I oh god i'm dying did salvia with some friends in a garage that felt very similar to the heat that's in this room right now <laughs> and Oof. i had i didn't have visuals but i had this overwhelming ethereal um uh feeling that at any given moment all four of the walls would just kind of fall down and reveal that there was a live studio audience watching the uh, <laughs> the experience. Because, you know, black light, um, it's fun little... Uh, you, you remember those posters that, like, were velvet, like a black velvet? Oh, I know. And then you could, like, put highlighter pen on them yeah, 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 yeah. and color them in? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was, like, a bunch of those... Um, and like everything I would try to say or like the thoughts that I would try to convey would get a studio audience reaction from my head. So I'm like, Oh, do I say this right now? And then I'm like kind of rehearsing it in my head. And then the studio audience is like, Oh, (laughs) Oh, Mm. Ooh. Like one of those like spicy kiss scenes ones, you know? Um, (laughs) But it was, it was just such a weird, like euphoric, dissociative, out of my body, in my body kind of experience that I actually kind of drew an affinity for Salvia from that (laughs) for like just a little bit, just a little bit. Pivoting. I've never done salvia, but I'll tell you something. Yeah. The psychedelic, been there. And I'm going to tell you something. So the first time, the psychedelic. The psychedelic. Right. We're running out of time. The first time you've had the spies. The spies. We're out of time. The spice mother. So <clears throat> I want to co op Are wanna... we like actually out of time? Yeah. Oh. So I want to co opt it by telling the last story. Because <laughs> guess what? This is the one time it's better to be last and first. <laughs> <laughs> so in case your partner was my friend first and their birthday their birthday wow that was attractive <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna your start. partner was my friend first <laughs> I'm gonna start I'm gonna start over <laughs> just <for> the, just <laughs> um, so your partner was is, I've known your partner for a while. I knew your partner first, right? We're, we were close and I introduced you. And for their birthday, they were like, hey, I'm going to get some mushrooms and make some tea and some friends. And I was like, I'm, I've never really done 
anything. I didn't even smoke at the time. You were a pretty straight edge boy. But I was like, you know what? This is for someone I really care about and I'm close with. And I'm really willing to just take this time. So now I'm going to rewind. About a week and a half before that, I was still single. And I was on OkCupid. And somebody hit me up. And they were like, oh, you're cool or whatever. What's your number? And I was like, hmm, this person's weird. So I was like, you know what? I gave them my number. They were texting me. And I was like, hmm, that's interesting. The entire time I was texting them, I felt like they were weird and I didn't think I'm I'm gonna hold off on that. So your partner's birthday, yeah. We do the shrooms. Uh-huh. We're on the train. Yeah. They they're like asleep. We go to see God, like, do they love <laughs> do they love the sleeping train. in public? <laughs> then then the, we go. Their whole MO is how can I be the sleepiest person in the room? In public. <laughs> We go to uh, love of it, my life, not the Van Gogh one. Which one? Which one was it again? Mm. It was like a. It was like one of those, like it's like. I think it was the Van. Gogh No, it wasn't. One. It wasn't. The, it was not the Van Gogh one. No, but it's the same company. I took them to the Van Gogh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. One. it's the same company. Was it just like the fun butterflies? One? I, I can't remember, but it's effectively it's like you know, there's like some art, an interactive, yeah, all space utilizing kind of art exhibit. The main room is just like this. It's like lightly playing music and like stuff playing on the screen and I'm sitting there and I'm like texting my friends and I'm like, I don't know. I take mushrooms. I'm not high, but I'm like in my phone having an emotional conversation with everyone that I fucking know. <laughs> then we go to a bar and as we're at the bar, I'm on my phone and I start texting this person that I'd met on OkCupid from like three weeks ago. Huh? And as I'm texting them, on mushrooms, I thought to myself, this entire time that I've talked to them, it was nothing weird. Like, literally, they would text me and be like, hey, how are you doing? And I was like, oh, I don't know. Nothing weird. But that day, I thought to myself, oh, that's interesting. Hmm, I wonder if that's the mushrooms, because there's a feeling I have. And that feeling is, I know that this person who's texting me is like actually like a bot or a person trying to get information from me. Mm-hmm. And I'm also texting them because I know that. And I think it's funny to mess with them. But I was not <laughs> like self-aware of any of that. I don't know how to explain it. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like I was not aware. Like I, if you, like I'm thinking about it, it's like I did know. Yeah. And I wasn't, en- if I look at, if I looked at the text, I was engaging with them like I knew. And I, it was not like, when I say, it was not like an emotional connection. It was just like, oh, a person was texting me. But the entire time, I was like, you're weird. This isn't a person. But I knew. And so I literally was sitting in the bar. And I'm like, fucking, the, now the mushroom's hitting. <laughs> the phone is wavy. They message me. They text me. And I look at the phone. And I go, okay. I've noticed for a while that you keep texting me at like 1 a.m. in the morning. And I know I'm up late, but it's because you're not from here. (laughs) It's because we're not in the same time zone. And I was like, well, it just so happens that the last time I sent you a link to my podcast, which I did on purpose, I did it through a thing that allows me to see where you are. (gasps) That's so sneaky. Huh? It's really interesting to see that you're in like fucking Pakistan, you know. Oh, what? And you can't find love <laughs> in Pakistan? Not from a person who's pretending they're in Hell's Kitchen. Oh. Yeah. But I knew. I knew. Oh. I knew from the very first time that I had that interaction. Oh, like, I knew it. This but is I, a bot. But I thought, or like just a person trying to like do a scam or something, which is definitely what it is. Dude, that's how I felt when I first joined Seeking Arrangements. It was a whole thing. I was trying to be a sugar baby. They were trying to be a sugar baby. We were just two babies just just crying for someone to take care of us. Psychedelics, they they release a certain kind of emotionality. Yeah. In me, you know what I mean? Where it's like it's like uh you know that this is happening, you know An what you're intuition. doing. Intuition. And it's like, oh, I'm I'm doing this because because I think it's funny. But like I didn't know that. Hmm. It's very strange. I did not know. Did you think you learned a little about yourself in that moment? Not really. 
but definitely I turned to a friend of our, a friend of ours who has a bridge piercing and we were having a conversation and I said, "Why did you do that?" Oh. And they said, "It's upset my parents." And I just I'm on mushrooms. Mm. And if you're white and your friend presenting and you have a weird piercing and you tell me that you did it just to get back at your parents, I have to do everything in my life to not laugh. Not at you. Just at the whole the whole situation. I live in fucking Brooklyn. I have a podcast. I, I got a podcast as soon as I moved to Brooklyn. <laughs> oh God. This is <laughs> Man, I love being first. Hey. Being first is good. If you ain't first. Your last. Your last. This has been a really fun Oof. episode. We've we've really broached a lot of firsts here, and I think uh, we've made a lot of headway as as the firsts. We've we've blazed a trail for all those who come after us, or on us, or with us. <laughs> My name's been Chandler Phillips. You can find me at Chandler Does Jokes or BubbleBearComedy.com if you want to see some other, you know, musings, rambling. You pay for that? Yeah, I do. You know what? I should stop. To be honest, it's too much money. You should give me the information. I can make a website. God, I'd love to do that. Because I would. I literally just. I was. I was checking out my budget recently. Wait no, so, sorry. We, this is like this is like <laughs> as we're leaving. We my name this. is Jay. Okay. My name is James Barry. You can find me on Twitter ugh, X, at what funny friend on TikTok at living underscore dad dot joke, and you can find us anywhere, everywhere at was that in good taste. And remember, drinking is not required, but it is recommended. Yeah. So what we're gonna do though? Do you remember what our first episode was? It was white people in Wu-Tang. White people in Wu-Tang. White people in Wu-Tang. With a Y. With a Y. Yeah, I did that on purpose. <laughs> you don't want to annoy me.